the time, Bloopers. My, isn't it a pleasant day? The sun is shining, the birds are singing. And I won't stand for it. I'm warm, and the Demolo's day will be shattered when I seize the Kairos. <laughs> time. The most precious treasure in the universe. Our mission? To explore it. To travel through history, unraveling its mysteries, unlocking its secrets, unleashing its energy. Knowledge is power. Well, it's a great big world. And it's been around a long, long time. It's almost ready, dear. Huh? Oh, can I lick the spoon? I don't think you want to do that. Come on, mother, you always hog it. I never get to lick the spoon. But honey, no. Mm, this is your best frosting ever. It's not frosting, dear. It's a little something I whipped up for your rash. Mm. Hey, big guy. Hey, Dad. What's the matter, AJ? <sighs> nothing. Now, when you say nothing in that tone of voice, what it really means is something. Come on, son. <coughs> Spit it out. What's wrong? My life bites. The girl I like likes my best friend. I got beat out from starting shortstop on the baseball team and I'm not doing well in math. I'm on a one-way trip to nowhere. You're not doing well in math? AJ, you don't know how lucky you are. You have everything, honey. Good health and people who love and believe in you. Uh-huh. I think I'll be loved and healthy in my room now. Sir, our scanners are picking up really loud yelling and screaming. No, not warp again. As if I didn't have enough problems. Okay, prepare the ship for my arrival. Initiate boarding procedure. Synchronize. Ciencias potencia. Knowledge is power. to be here, AJ. Whoops, Lily, Quinky. Maybe he should consider the hair club for villains. Maybe you should consider what your life will be like when I seize the Kairos and make you my prisoners. <laughs> Nobody invited you to this party, Warp. They should bring Warp along. Everybody needs a good dip. <laughs> <laughs> I invited myself to this little shindig, but I'll give you the honor of having the first dance at warp speed! Ah! I hope no one else wants to cut a rug, because it's time for you to cut the mustard! You don't see that very often. A guy with a chip and a spike on his shoulder. I know a guy with no shoulders at all. He was a real worm. <laughs> What's your challenge, Warp? Simply this, Admiral Bird Brain. Uh, I challenge you to go back in time and find a man who was truly down in the dumps. A man who wrote the book on being down and out. Make any mistakes, and you'll be down for the count. Ah! <laughs> a very challenging challenge. Warp said this man wrote the book on being down and out. Aha! Uh -huh. He must mean a writer. Who had a tough life. Like who? Someone who got its tongue stuck in a typewriter? It could happen. We really got to rack our brains, put our heads through the grindstone. We're looking for someone who was a raven maniac. That's it, the raven. We must go visit the man who wrote that famous poem, Edgar Allan Poe. 
Bit, set the coordinates. Destination locked in. The Big Apple, New York City, New York, in the year 1545. Just once, I'd like a window seat. Be like me. Use the window as your seat. The smooth glass feels good in your buns. <laughs> Maria, contact the tower and request clearance for 1845. Time Tower, this is the Kairos. Time Tower here. Roger that, Kairos. So, you're going to visit Edgar Allan Poe, huh? Well, if you leave now, you'll be able to join him for an unhappy meal. Is he really that depressed? Well, let's put it this way. He likes his eggs sunny side down. <laughs> Can you clear us, Pulse? I'll clear you, all right. Right to the year 1845. Launch from passenger entry platform 153.662. Let's make time track. seaboard of the continent North America lies the state of New York, the Empire State, or in the case of Edgar Allan Poe, the state of depression. Welcome to New York City. Watch your wallet. And here he is. The father of the modern detective story. The father of the modern <laughs> horror story. A mother. The mother of all mayhem. The man Stephen King tips his Horror hat too. A man whose life goes from bad to worse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Allow me to introduce the original lunatic of literature, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. AJ, he's quoting from his most famous poem, Raven. It's about a miserable, grieving man who's lost his sweetheart and is visited by a sinister, black, feathered raven who keeps repeating just one word, nevermore. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Not anymore. All right, uh, maybe let's see. Uh, 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 go to the store. Oh, God. Didn't I have to find the most neurotic raven in the world? All you have to say is one word. Nevermore. All right, let's try it again. Mary Tyler Moore. No, it's not Mary Tyler Moore. It's Nevermore. Albert Gore. No. Open the door. Help the poor. How about, how about, hear me roar? <laughs> I'm awfully bored. Oh, let's face it. It's over. I'm finished. Ah! You're the only raven in the world that does improv. I won't be ignored. Ah. What? No encore? This is war. Ah! Tell you what, let's get together again, huh? After the holidays, keep in touch. Mr. Poe, we've come from the future to meet you. Uh, uh, that's right. I'm Commander A.J. Malloy, and this is the Time Machine Kairos. We're here to learn about your life's work. Yeah, really. I always wanted to spill my guts out to a giant rooster. And seriously, what is that, an orange grove on your head? Huh? Hello, Mr. Poe. I'm Izzy. Wow, I thought I had problems. You're a nightmare. Your poems and stories have given millions of people nightmares all over the world. You're one of the greatest writers in literary history. You're the father of both the horror story and the detective story. Mr. Poe, you're famous. Yeah, I'm riding on a rainbow. Trust me, I'm a loser. I'm nowhere, I'm nothing. Oh, woe is me. Actually, Poe is he. <laughs> I need this like a hole in the head. Where did it all go wrong, huh? Let's take a trip down memory lane. Or in Poe's case, memory gutter. Edgar Allan Poe, this is your lousy life. <laughs> <laughs> 
You were born on January 19th, 1809, to Poe but honest family. Your father quickly deserted your family, and your mother died by the time you were three. Yeah, about that time, people stopped calling me Mr. Lucky. Adopted by John Allen, a well-to-do merchant from Richmond, Virginia, who later cut you off and disinherited you. Edgar Allan Poe, do you remember this voice? Edgar, if you try to see me again, I will yell for the police. Doesn't stay out of my life mean anything to you? That's right. Your first love. Engaged at 17, dumped at 18. But the happy days of youth can't last forever. First book, a total failure. Dismissed from West Point, married your cousin. I thought you were familiar. Failed as a magazine editor. Heartbroken, penniless, lonely, neurotic. Hello, I repeat. You married your cousin. I could go on, but... Ah, please. My family pet was an albatross. My favorite childhood game was pin the blame on the donkey. And our family crest was, what do you think, two mental patients wrestling a pharmacist, huh? And yet, out of the shambles of your life came genius. You created some of the most remarkable poems and tales in literary history. And they were kind of scary. <laughs> Not kind of scary. Very scary. <laughs> Welcome to Edgar Allan Poe's Theater of Terror. Our first story begins with a man in an unusual predicament. <laughs> this is the pit. Exactly. And no pit would be complete without a <laughs> pendulum. This is a scene from one of Poe's most famous stories, The Pit and the Pendulum. <laughs> I read this one. A prisoner of the Spanish Inquisition lies in a dungeon facing certain death as a razor-sharp blade swings ever closer. The helpless, terrified prisoner is bound very tightly and is inches away from a horrible death. Oh, and swarming over him are hundreds of huge, hideous cats, right? I'm sure Mr. Poe's gonna say cats. Hey. Wouldn't cats make you feel a little more relaxed, huh? But hey, is it rot? <laughs> you big baby. Ah! Ah! Our second story begins thusly. Bark! Uh, hark! What is that fiendish sound? I don't know. Hopefully it's the end of the world. Oh. Our cousin! I could go on, but... Ah, uh, please. Family pet was an albatross. My favorite childhood game was pin the blame on the donkey. And our family crest was, what do you think, two mental patients wrestling a pharmacist, huh? And yet, out of the shambles of your life came genius. You created some of the most remarkable poems and tales in literary history. And they were kind of scary. <laughs> Not kind of scary. Very scary. <laughs> Welcome to Edgar Allan Poe's Theater of Terror. Our first story begins with a man in an unusual predicament. <laughs> this is the pit. Exactly. And no pit would be complete without a <laughs> pendulum. This is a scene from one of Poe's most famous stories, The Pit and the Pendulum. <laughs> I read this one. A prisoner of the Spanish Inquisition lies in a dungeon facing certain death as a razor-sharp blade swings ever closer. The helpless, terrified prisoner is bound very tightly and is inches away from a horrible death. Oh, and swarming over him are hundreds of huge, hideous cats, right? I'm sure Mr. Poe's gonna say cats. Hey, wouldn't cats make you feel a little more relaxed, huh? But hey, is it rot? <laughs> you big baby. Our second story begins thusly. Bark! Uh, hark! What is that fiendish sound? I don't know. Hopefully it's the end of the world. The sound grows louder, louder, louder. Is it possible you hear it not? Are you making a mockery of my horror? It's the beating of a hideous liver. It's not a liver, you mutt. It's a heart. A telltale heart. And my brilliant story of the same name. You jerk! A maniac 
murders an old man and buries him under the floor of his room. While the police ask him what happened to the old man, he thinks he hears the heartbeat of the victim. He rips up the floorboards, revealing his foul deed. Ah! <sighs> Mark! Uh, uh, Mark! What is that fiendish sound? Oh. Of course. The tell, tell, tell. Yeah. Go fetch some brains. Huh? Ah! Stop! Midnight. The witching hour. Time for a very curious tale indeed. <laughs> Meet Mr. Roderick Usher, the last living member of the Usher family. Yeah, he's the leading character in an upbeat little tale of mine called The Fall of the House of Usher. Poor Roderick, rapidly going insane. He hears frightening sounds coming from the depths of the Usher house. Yeah, Roderick is being haunted by the spirit of his dead sister, Madeline. At least Roderick thought Madeline was dead. So falls the House of Usher. Speak of the devil. Hello, Madeline. Oh, you look fabulous. Lose a little weight, honey? Whoa! <laughs> Thought you really fell for Izzy. Ravens, tortures, murders, premature burials? How do you come up with all this horrible stuff? Oh, it's a gift. And anyway, I'm insured for pain, tragedy, humiliation, and very, very bad luck through Blue Cross to Bear. You're not only the father of the modern horror story, you also wrote the first modern detective story. You did? Oh, I love to sniff out a good detective story. Which is surprising, because usually Bootsy doesn't have a club. <laughs> My detective's name was C. Auguste Dupin. And he first appeared in a light-hearted yarn of mine called The Murders in the Rue Morgue. Mr. Poe is being too <laughs> humble. The Murders in the Rue Morgue was completely different from any story written before it by any author. Characters created by other authors had solved crimes by making wild guesses or by making the criminal confess. Poe's detective was different. He solved crime through a process called ratiocination, which applied the science of detection and rational thought. And hey, aren't I the king of rational thought? Huh? Sure, if you consider stories featuring brutality, murder, and... Burial before death, rational. Excuse me, Mr. Judgmental, but don't I hang around cemeteries pricing plots, huh? <gasps> don't be so hard on yourself. Out of the ashes and despair of your wretched life, you created a style of storytelling that will live forever. Every creepy book, every horror film, every detective story that baffles the television viewer owes a debt to Edgar Allan Poe. Doesn't matter. I married my cousin. I'm a moron. But hey, as long as you have your health. Speaking of health, Izzy doesn't look so hot. This will cheer you up. Mr. Poe, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you and your mummy to leave now. You're scaring Izzy. Leave? You people just don't appreciate funny. Huh? Come on, Sparky. Well, he's certainly the death of the party. Nothing but trouble. Yeah, but out of his troubles came a lot of classic scary stories. Scary Commander, you don't know the meaning of the word, but you're going to find out. <laughs> Let's just see how ready you are, Commander. Question one, what famous word did the raven repeat? Won't the raven bear me more? <laughs> Running sore. Ah! <laughs> Quoth the raven, 
nevermore. Ah, you think you're so smart, but you do. In what old story did a brother and sister meet a disastrous end? This'll stump him, AJ. Put, 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 put it on. I get it. Warp, the story you're thinking of is Pose, the Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, oh, that's really lame, Commando. For a second there, I thought I was at a Gallagher concert. <laughs> and I hate it when you use props. Wits alone will answer question numero three -o. Who had no children, but he was the father of something? What? Let's see. Not the father of his country. That was Washington. Think, AJ. You can do it. Poe was the father of both the modern horror story and the modern detective story. <laughs> It will be the fall of the house of Kairos! <laughs> Another unanimous decision. AJ, you beat Warp again. <laughs> and every last skip of information is based on this disc. Don't let it out of your sight. Knowledge is power, my boy. Thanks, guys. Bit, fire this baby up and fly us home. Ah! <laughs> Commander's Journal. Subject, Edgar Allan Poe. Having met this unfortunate writer, I realized that great art can come out of personal tragedy and hardship. I now have a new appreciation for life's greatest gifts, love and good health. They should be cherished and nourished, because it's these blessings that truly separate the haves from the have-nots. How much I love you and Dad. Y'all are the greatest. <laughs> what happened to that unhappy boy that visited us earlier? The one whose life, and I quote, bites. <laughs> well, I thought about it, and I really don't have that much to complain about. Everybody gets the blues now and again, honey. I'm just glad you learned to shake them off. Hey, uh, where's Dad? Fell asleep on the couch again. <laughs> I shouldn't have had seconds of that rash cream. Oh. 